Before Homo sapiens came to rule the earth, we were not alone. We like to think of ourselves as the pinnacle of evolution, the chosen species, the only ones. But the truth is, far older, far stranger and far more crowded. Scattered across time and continents were others, other humans, not myths, not monsters, but real breathing, thinking, dreaming just like us. Some walked tall and proud through the burning plains of Africa. Some braved the icy winds of Ice Age Europe with tools and fire. Others carved out quiet lives on remote islands, never knowing the wider world would never hear their names. They are our forgotten kin, our lost brothers and sisters, and their stories are written not in books, but in bones, in DNA, in echoes whispered through the ages. Let's meet them. Long before Homo sapiens ever dreamed of firelight, they stood up. Homo erectus, the upright man, the first of our kind to truly walk tall across deserts, savannas, and even oceans. They rose in Africa nearly two million years ago, and unlike their ancestors, they didn't stay put. With nothing but stone tools, bare feet, and a brain only two-thirds the size of ours, they ventured out into the unknown, into history. They reached Java long before there was a map. They stood in China before there was a name for China. They hunted fought, migrated, and adapted. Their bones have been found from South Africa to Southeast Asia, a footprint so wide, no other archaic human could match it. Their fires burned in caves long before Neanderthals ever struck flint. They butchered elephants. They may have even rafted across seas, and yet they vanished. No burial sites. No carvings, no songs, just fossils, scattered like puzzle pieces. But every time we find a new fragment, a new clue, the story of Homo erectus shifts and grows. They were not us, but they paved the path that led to us. They stood first so we could stand forever. They were forged in ice. When Europe froze beneath glaciers and saber-toothed cats stalked the shadows, Neanderthals endured. Stocky, powerful, and fierce-built, not for speed, but for survival. Their bodies were short and thick, chests broad, limbs muscular. They didn't just live in cold, they belonged to it. They made tools with deadly precision. They hunted mammoths face to face. They buried their dead. They may have even whispered prayers to the wind. For over 300,000 years, Neanderthals ruled Europe and parts of Western Asia. That's five times longer than Homo sapiens have existed. But then we arrived, not with claws, not with brawn, but with stories, firelight, and strategy. We didn't always fight them. Sometimes we loved them. Their blood still runs in our veins. If you're of European or Asian descent, they are your ancestors too. And yet, some 40,000 years ago, they vanished. No final war, no epic extinction just a slow fading like breath on glass. We think we won, but perhaps the Neanderthal didn't lose. Perhaps they gave us part of their strength and chose silence instead of surrender. The snow remembers them, so should we. We never saw their faces. We never found their homes, and yet they are still inside us. The Denisovans are the shadows of prehistory, not a skull, 
not a skeleton. Only fragments. A finger bone in a Siberian cave. A tooth from a child who died alone. But from those fragments came a whisper. A genome. A presence. They were human like us, like Neanderthals but different. Their DNA tells of strength, altitude, and survival. They may have crossed mountain ranges where modern lungs would fail. In the Himalayas, Tibetan Sherpas still carry their Janisa gift for breathing in thin air. They left no art, no tools we can call theirs. But they left children with Neanderthals, with us. In Melanesia and Southeast Asia, Denisovan blood runs strongest silent legacy passed down through the centuries. We call them a species. But what if they were something more? A people without a homeland. A song without sound. A story still unfinished. Not forgotten. Just hidden. In the beginning, there was fear. Lightning. Fangs, darkness, and then there was a hand reaching for a stone and reshaping the future. Homo habilis, the handyman. They were small, fragile, barely over a meter tall. Their brains were modest. Their voices perhaps no more than grunts and glances but they held something no creature had ever held before, intent. They struck stone upon stone knot by accident, but with purpose. And out of that sparkless collision came a blade, a tool, a decision. The first toolmakers, the first to know they were changing something. They hunted, but mostly scavenged. They ran not to fight, but to endure. They shared, they taught, they remembered. Their fossils lie deep in the earth of East Africa, near the Rift Valley where fire, life, and death have always danced together. Homo habilis didn't write stories. They were the first sentence in ours. Their hands never built temples, but they carved the path that led to every cathedral, spacecraft, and city. They picked up the stone, and gave us the first choice between beast and builder. Once upon a time, on an island lost to the world, the rules of nature twisted. Elephants shrank, dragons grew, and humans became tiny. Homo floresiensis, nicknamed by scientists and whispered in legendas the Hobbits. They stood just over one meter tall. Brain no larger than a grapefruit. Yet their hands carved stone tools sharp enough to butcher prey and defend against monsters. They lived on Flores, a remote island in what is now Indonesia, cut off from the mainland, cut off from time. There, they hunted miniature elephants, fought off giant storks, and may have crossed paths with Komodo dragons. They built fires. They made blades. They endured for tens of thousands of years long after Neanderthals were gone. And then, one day, they vanished. No war, no sign of disease, just gone. But the islanders who live there today they still whisper about little people in the forest. They say the Ebu Gogo stole food, spoke strange words, and disappeared into the caves when chased. Science calls them extinct. But myths say they were never just myth. Small in stature, enormous in wonder. Deep beneath the earth past, narrow rock corridors where no sunlight dares to reach, they place their dead. No ceremony, no fire, just silence and choice. Homo naledi, discovered in the twisting tombs of South Africa's rising star cave system, 
this species shattered everything we thought we knew. They had tiny brains, only about one-third the size of ours. They looked more like apes than modern humans. Curved fingers, sloping skulls, long arms for climbing. And yet, they carried bodies into chambers so deep, only intention could have led them there. Not food, not instinct, but remembrance. No other animal buries its dead in darkness. Not with such care, not without light. Were they honoring their fallen, fearing spirits, or simply recognizing that life ends? Their bones were placed gently, deliberately, over and over again. Hundreds of them. They should not have known how to mourn. And yet somehow they did. Perhaps the mind doesn't need size to hold meaning. Perhaps the soul finds its way even in the dark. On a forested island wrapped in mist and sea, they lived unseen, unbothered, unwritten. Homo luzonensis. Discovered only in 2019, their existence shook the tree of human evolution because they didn't fit. They were small like Homo floresiensis standing, barely over a meter tall. But their bones told a strange story. Curved toes and fingers like climbers. Teeth like nothing seen in any other human. A jaw that looked ancient more like Australopithecus, the ape men from over two million years ago. And yet, they were here, on Luzon, an island in the Philippines, roughly 67,000 years ago. They were already surviving, hunting, and living in isolation, while Neanderthals and Denisovans roamed continents far away. No tools have been found, no burial sites, just hints, echoes, bones in a cave called Kayao. How did they get there? Did they sail, drift, or were they born of an even older lineon we've never mapped? Science isn't sure, but one thing is certain. The human story isn't linear. It's tangled, branching, full of forgotten whispers and broken paths. And somewhere out there, a whole world may still lie buried waiting to be remembered. We are the only ones left. While the others faded into bone and shadow, we remained. Homo sapiens, the wise human. But wisdom was never guaranteed. Only possibility. We began in Africa, some 300,000 years, ago-fragile, clever, hungry. We carved stones into blades, painted dreams onto cave walls, sang to the stars, and followed fire into the unknown. Unlike others, we didn't just adapt we imagined. We created gods. We formed tribes. We told stories. That was our greatest weapon, not muscle, not speed, but myth. We met the Neanderthal sand, watched them vanish. We kissed the Denisovan sand, bore their children. We crossed paths with Floresiensis, Luzonensis, Naladiand, kept walking. Was it chance? Was it conquest? Or was it a story too painful to tell? We are not better, only remaining. And in our blood lives all of them. Their tools are in our hands, their fears in our bones, their silence in our memory. We are the fire they carried forward. We are the voice they never got to raise. But here's the question, will we remember them? Or will we let them vanish again this time, not into extinction, but into forgetfulness? If their stories moved you, 
If you felt the breath of ghosts behind every fossil, then don't let the last of them be silent. Subscribe to Prehistoric Shadows, because we're not just remembering bones, we're remembering blood.